Hi, I'm Two Siders. Anyone remembers Hunting Unlimited? I played Hunting Unlimited 3 and 2008 and for 15 years I did not touch another hunting game and to be honest I didn't miss them either. However, when I'm playing the Hunter Call of the Wild, something in my body gets overtaken by some primal instinct and I just have to keep on hunting more animals. Unfortunately, learning how to play can be a rocky road. So after playing about 40 hours, I prepared this video for newcomers specifically. But if you are a veteran, did you know every single tip in the video? Comment if I got anything wrong or if you have other tips to share. This video, video took, took about, about 70 hours to write, record and edit. I'd appreciate a like, not simply for the views sake, but because less new players will feel frustrated by the game mechanics if they watch this video. But I'll tell you more about my motivation at tip number 34. Comment below the craziest thing that happened to you in game or the weapon, animal or map you would most likely want to see in the future. I wish they added the gun that best describes my sex life, the Bushmaster. Comment and even more people will get to see this video. Now let's talk about your basic gear and starter maps. To start the video, let me say that out of your starter weapons, the Ranger 243 rifle, bound to shortcut one on the PC, is actually a great starter weapon and is what you should be using for pretty much everything because you might not be able to buy a better gun just yet. It's not great to hunt big animals like moose with it, but it's definitely doable. Keep in mind, ammo is not infinite in this game and you can only buy more from outpost cabinets, like the basic ammo for your ranger rifle, which is actually free. But at the beginning of the video, I don't want to overwhelm you with all this information about outposts and shopping. So let's talk more about your basic gear. Bound to keybind four, your binoculars are the other essentials you will be using a lot. You can outline animals with it for a couple of seconds and display other useful information. Sometimes you can even outline an animal in foliage, even before you see it, which always feels like cheating. By the way, I will mostly talk about PC shortcuts in this video, but you should check out the shortcuts menu anyways, whether you are on a console or a PC, because you might find other useful shortcuts I won't mention in this video, like auto running. Compared to your rifle, your starter shotgun and handgun are pretty much useless for multiple reasons. No fucking way. Always use your Giga Ched Ranger 243 rifle as a first option. This is one of those games where the difficulty curve for new players is much, much steeper than most games and for more reasons than simply not knowing the mechanics. People that have played this game more will literally make, for instance, less noise with their character or have steadier aim or get more information from tracking because they have unlocked character perks or skills that you don't yet have. You are at a serious disadvantage starting out. So if you make any mistakes, don't beat yourself up about it and just keep on going. Also, the two starter maps or reserves that come with the base game are literally two of the hardest locations to hunt on because of the amount of foliage. It's much easier to start somewhere sparse, like the savanna or Cuatro Colinas. So you are at a disadvantage on three fronts. Knowledge, character perks, and even the damn maps. Don't worry, I can help you with the knowledge part in this video, where you won't feel frustrated because you didn't know something anymore. We will talk more about DLC, or downloadable paid content like maps and other stuff at the end of the video. I just wanted to quickly say that you don't necessarily need to buy the maps to play on them. You can also hop onto any multiplayer public servers of the map being hosted without having to pay for the maps. To finish up the basic gear and map section, you also have a phone, otherwise known as a hunter mate, which tracks your story missions, but I don't want to bore you with story missions just yet. First, I want to teach you how to hunt. Finding your animal. To find your target and when you are trying to get into position to shoot it, 
you will encounter things like footprints, poop, noise, animal need zones such as eating, drinking and resting spots where they might stay between given hours, and eventually you might actually see your target. But I want you to think of this as a two-step process, tracking and seeing. Sometimes you will skip to step two and actually see your target without having to even track it, which is always great. Other times you will track your animal and you are less than 30 meters from it and you still might not be able to see it because it's just around the hill or inside the bush, which is always frustrating. By the way, I will be giving examples in meters, but yards are very similar. For instance, 200 meters is around 220 yards and 80 meters is 87 yards. So always add a little bit extra like 10% to my examples if you want them in yards. If you want feet, go to a different website, you disgusting degenerate. Animal footprints will show you the general direction the animal went and animals will leave poop very often that ranges from very old to just now. You can use poop to tell how fresh the tracks are, but I will only tell you more about tracks after we've shot our first animal, because I have a much, much more controversial way of beginning my hunts than following boring footprints. If at first I don't see my next target with my binoculars, the way I begin my hunt is instead of following animal tracks or resetting the time for need zones, I literally begin sprinting around like a maniac which of course makes a lot of noise. Eventually, around 200 meters out, you will get the most overpowered gameplay feature, the sound indicator. In the best case scenario, the sound indicator is simply a mating call, but very often it's a warning call, which indicates the animal has noticed you, but has not yet fled. The animals can unfortunately also start fleeing, but to be honest, it's still more efficient to sprint around the map until you get a non-fleeing sound indicator than to crawl around pointlessly for 40 minutes. After getting a non-fleeing sound indicator, I want to share with you my multi-step process of getting to the 80 meter golden range where we will shoot our target. Now, of course, your favorite YouTuber shoots their targets from 200 meters away, but I prefer to get much closer and I want you to learn this as well as it's a very important skill in this game. I want you to imagine four separate ranges around your animal. One, more than 200 meters away, 200 to 150 meters away, 150 to 80 meters away, and basically anything lower than 80 meters. To get into these ranges without spooking your animal, we will utilize the four movement options, sprinting, walking, crouching, and crawling. Pay attention to the bottom right. Each of these movement options will make you less and less visible and noisy. Like I said, to get to the 200 meter range, we sprint. To get to the 150 meter range, we simply walk. To get to the 80 meter golden range from there, we crouch walk with control. To get even closer, for instance for bow hunting, you probably will need to crawl with Z. These ranges are just estimates and multiple factors can play into spooking your animals more easily than I will explain soon. How do we know exactly how far away our target is from us? The sound indicator and the binoculars give a range, but to know exactly how far away you are from your target, place a waypoint right on top of your animal with the binoculars with R. I like to remove this waypoint every now and then because it can be really fucking annoying to see with it on. Also, you can just press U to hide all tracks temporarily, making it easier to spot your animal through the foliage. How to spook your animal. Let's say hypothetically with accidentally spooked our target. Accidentally spooking your animal can be due to many factors, but by far the largest one is noise. I'm not kidding, you can track how many animals you've spooked in the game through the hunting profile in the codex, and literally more than 95% of the time it's going to be because of noise, not visibility. Most of this is probably because of the quad bike but still. 
notice that by stepping onto foliage, small rocks or inside bushes, you will produce more noise, even though your visibility is also reduced when you are inside of bushes and foliage. When I'm trying to get closer to my target, you will see me move around foliage a lot like some sort of a badass predator. There's something in those trees. It's me, motherfucker. Your animal can also be in a calm or alert status. If the animal gives you a warning call, they are automatically alert for a while, then they eventually calm down. Nobody actually knows what the alert state means in the game, except of course that one guy furiously typing in my comment section right now, but it probably increases the chance that animals will notice you. By the way, the game might bug out and not actually give you a fleeing sound indicator, or it might be really close to a previous sound indicator, so you might just miss it, so just be aware. Also, just because one animal fled from the flock, there might be others left behind, so don't start sprinting just yet when you get a fleeing sound indicator. Furthermore, after you shoot your target, try to take some pot shots at the other animals fleeing. You might just get lucky. The Ranger 243 is actually great for this purpose of culling herds, because it has a 5 cartridge magazine, whereas other snipers might just have a 1 cartridge magazine. Carnivores, especially lions and cougars, flee from a much greater distance than, for instance, dumb moose who accidentally run over you sometimes, but it also just feels random. This is just my experience. There was this in-game event once where the guide was telling me on the radio how scared he was to kill a grizzly from 200 yards away at the same time as I just shot one in the heart from less than 40 yards away because it decided to play death. Sometimes certain animals can also go on the aggressive. Buffaloes will charge you all the time and <laughs> this one time I was chasing two out of three wolves that attacked me first, okay? Anyways, after tracking the wolves for many miles, they literally led me to their pack that just killed me. At first, animal aggressivity seemed realistic behavior, but because it's a very easy way to get cheap kills, uh, you just kind of strafe around and kill them or you die yourself. This kind of ruins the point of the game, in my personal opinion. If animals run into you, even small deer by accident, you will take varying amounts of damage. And you can also die from this. Don't worry, death has no penalty in the game. You will just respawn at an outpost or somewhere else. Another great factor for fleeing animals is their animal difficulty level, which is an individual score that can be seen when scanning an animal. Animals in Call of the Wild are like World of Warcraft bosses. They go from level 1 difficulty to level 9, depending on how big their trophy organs, such as the horns, antlers, skulls or body size are. The higher the difficulty level of the animal, the more artificial intelligence is behind it, so they will notice you sooner. Wind can also be a factor seen on the bottom right also, but I left this at the end because it's almost never an issue. Just spray yourself with the anti-scent spray that lasts literally for half an hour real life time. Wind is, to be honest, one of those mechanics that could absolutely be removed from the game, but the immersion Karens would be mad. If you are running after spooked animals, you can also try to match their speed. Animal footprints will tell you if the animal was running or not. Sprint if you see them running or trotting, but once the footprints tell you they started walking, you should slow down. To be fair, even if you do everything correctly, it's very easy to either spook the animals again, or slow walk for 15 minutes even though the animals are still miles away. You never know. Finally, just know that animals can also be traveling even while being calm. Sometimes it can be impossible to get to that 80 meter golden range because you cannot even keep up with the herd by crouch walking or getting noticed. In that case, I recommend you to just take the shot from 150 meters or less. Before taking the shot. 
Here we are, we snuck to the 80 meter golden range again, and we are ready to shoot. But before doing so, always aim for the four vital organs, the heart, lungs, liver, or neck. One thousand on neck. <laughs> Always aim for the four vital organs for two reasons. One, so that your animal doesn't run from here to fucking Timbuktu before dying. Two, you will get a better trophy badge, money, and experience. As a new player, probably a hundred percent of my calculated vital organ shots were actually long shots every time. It's completely fine to hit the lungs. With the Ranger 243, even a class 6 animal will die in about 200 meters when hitting the lungs. Now, never headshot your animals because most of the time that also damages the trophy organ like the antlers or the skull itself and will give you a smaller trophy rating. Just before taking the shot, I like to place a binocular marker so in the chaos that ensues, I know exactly where I've shot my animal. Again, place the marker next to or behind the animal, because the marker can be really fucking annoying. Whilst aiming down sights, hold shift to exhale and steady your aim. After a while, your heart rate will go up and you need to take a breather again to be able to steady your aim. The aim wobble always goes in the same direction, up, right and then down. So if you are a CSGO veteran, you can counteract this movement if need be. Take the shot. Before you go on a wild goose chase after your target, I want you to first go to the scene of the crime and find the original blood splatter. This will tell you if you got a vital organ hit or not. The reason why we check this is because it can be very annoying to track down an animal that you did not vitally hit because they will literally never die and will run forever before stopping again and you might run after them and spook them again and do this whole process again. So anyways, I want you to make the decision yourself to go chasing after them or not because it's also completely fine to abandon this hunt and try to track another animal now. Also note that sometimes the game will bug and not render in the first blood splatter or it might be really difficult to see if it's inside of water. I want to tell you a story. On my first night of playing, I vital organ hit the biggest moose you've ever seen and I never found the corpse because first of all I shot it with the measly Ranger 243 but also, more importantly, I didn't know how to track it for the miles to come. There is only one thing you need to know about tracking, and learning it made me feel so stupid and disappointed. I decided to make this video and teach you about this game so that you don't have to feel stupid and disappointed as well. So we are just going to interact with the blood or the footprints of our animal, and now all we need to do is Ignore all the white tracks that belong to other animals and just follow the turquoise or light blue tracks because those will belong to our animal. From now on, you will be able to find every single animal you've ever shot and character skills will even make it easier. For some reason, I didn't catch that when I first started playing. Be aware that scanning a different animal with the binoculars also resets your tracked animal to that one. Also, different maps might have different track colors. For instance, Medved Taiga has a red tracking color instead of the light blue, because everything is fucking light blue on that map. But either way, you can just change the tracking color in the settings. Or can beast alike fear the gun? Great black wolves. Among the most vicious and cunning predators. At 
at night, the only way you will find tracks is by turning on your headlamp with L. Now, I have no idea how much that increases your visibility to animals, because I always reset the time back to morning every time night falls, because it's really annoying to find anything at night. By the way, it's perfectly normal that your animal only bleeds very low, even if it was vitally shot, especially if it's a larger animal hit with a smaller arms. If it's an organ hit, don't worry, eventually they will all die. Trophies and trophy ratings. After finding the corpse, before we press enter to collect the rewards for our kill, I want to tell you about trophy ratings and how to maximize the money and experience gained from each kill. You can right click to see where your shots hit the animal and on the right hand side you can see how much percentage damage each shot did with which weapon and what ammo. Some of this damage is from bleeding so note that. On the left hand side you can see your trophy rating score. Each animal species has different possible trophy rating ranges. So for instance a duck will never have the trophy rating of a bear no matter how mean the duck is. Trophy organ sizes or small animals weight determines the trophy rating and the trophy rating in turn determines the animal's difficulty. This trophy rating number never increases or decreases no matter how well or badly you hunted down your animal. However, you might get a worse cosmetic badge for your trophy if you fail these four things called harvest checks. The four harvest checks are essentially how ethically you have slain your animal. One of them is that the animal must die as quickly as possible. This is why we aim for the vital organs and why, for instance, shooting the heart is always better than shooting the lungs because they will just die quicker. Interestingly enough, if you hit the animal in the stomach or the spine, they will also die fairly soon, but these do not count for the vital organ check because it's very painful for the animal to die this way. Second, Trophy organs like antlers or the skull for carnivores must be left intact, which is why we never shoot the animals in the head. Third, you must kill the animal in one or two shots. This is actually a clever game design decision because it rewards you for taking the time with your first shot. Or you can just be a quick scope god such as myself. The fourth and final harvest check and most confusing to new players is that the correct ammo type must be used, which is our following tip. All species have an animal class number, which is generally how big the species is. Don't confuse this number with the animal difficulty, which is specific to an individual animal, whereas all the members of the same species belong to the same animal class. For instance, all jackrabbits are class one, Gems box are class 8 and your mom is class 11. Please note, small animals automatically pass the vital organ and trophy organ harvest checks and let's be honest, pretty much the two shot check as well, so you only need to worry about the ammunition check. Notice I previously said the correct ammo type, not weapon. If the Ranger 243 had an ammo type that supported hunting class 8 animals, we would have used it to hunt this poor Gamsbok. This is why if you hunt a moose or Gamsbok with your Ranger, you will not pass the ammunition harvest check, just like I didn't in this case. You will get a badge that reflects the trophy rating of the animal, minus how badly you hunted it down. This badge can be bronze, silver, gold or diamond, or if the animal is, uh, for instance, female and has no trophy organ, no badge. Even if you did everything perfectly, you still might just get a bad badge if your animal had a low trophy rating to begin with. If you fail any of the four harvest checks, your badge will downgrade by one, so a diamond becomes a gold, and even though our Gamsbok has a 232.9 trophy rating well above the silver cut line, because we failed one of the harvest checks, it became bronze. Your medal can only downgrade once though, even if you fail multiple 
harvest checks. So just like in real life, take every shot you can, no matter how messy the outcome is, as it's often better than doing nothing. More importantly than the trophy rating itself, you get money and experience for each collected animal, which is also called a harvest. There are five active ways to increase your money and experience gain from each harvest. The first tip, not shown on the screen right now, is simple. Animals with larger trophy ratings yield more rewards. With many species, only the male animals possess trophy organs to begin with, so always target the boys with the biggest antlers first. 2. The animal needs to die as fast as possible. Technically, this is the same as the vital organ harvest check, but because the number can drastically drop, sometimes you will only get a 100% if you manage to shoot the heart specifically. I am not joking, three hours passed between the second and the third shot. Bruh. We used the wrong ammo for our Gamsbok, it died very far away, so we got 0%. 3. Pass all the harvest checks. 4. Hunt more difficult species like carnivores. However, note that because carnivores scare so easily, it is often better to hunt smaller game in larger quantities. Grizzly bears are really easy to hunt though. Please note that even though buffaloes are listed as very hard, they still only give a measly 50% species bonus, which is probably just another stupid inconsistency in the game. And 5. There is also a consecutive harvest bonus. Basically, for each harvest, you will get 20% money and experience bonus, which caps out at 100% or after 5 harvests. Exiting the game resets the bonus and maybe also dying. When I tested this, one time when I didn't collect an animal, my bonus not only reset, but it also constantly stayed at 0%, even after multiple animals were collected, which really sucked. But another time, I could build it back up from 0%, so it's probably another stupid bug. By the way, a long time ago, consecutive harvest bonus used to also determine your trophy rating, but nowadays it's only money and experience. Now, something that confuses every new player is whether they should taxidermize, because Whoever the fuck designed the button made it look like you must press it. But in short, don't taxidermize because it costs a lot of money, better spent elsewhere. Unless of course you want to view your best trophies at these trophy lodge buildings later. At least there is a free trophy lodge with the base game, but the much better looking lodges have to be purchased separately through DLC. Either way, you can save around 10 animals into your harvests if you don't have the money right now, but might decide to taxidermize later. Back in my day, Hunting Unlimited used to show every single animal you've shot without any money sinks. Don't get me wrong, I like that you have to pay to taxidermize, just not that the biggest trophy lodges are separate DLCs. Finally, killing an animal increases something called the hunting pressure in the area, which on the map just looks like purple corruption from Terraria. Hunting pressure can build up and animals will avoid this area and their need zones might also disappear. Hunting pressure in one area disappears as hunting pressure on other parts of the map increases. Progression, story missions and points of interest. On every map, you can follow these story missions that have you unlock points of interest on the map or have you hunt a specific type of animal. And they also teach you about being a reserve warden in real life, which is pretty cool. Story missions actually reward both a large amount of experience and money, so it's definitely worth doing them. It's just that every now and then you get these run here and interact with this type of item, type of boring quests. Game maps are huge and are separated into multiple zones. Whenever you go into a new zone, you should climb up to a lookout tower and reveal the points of interest in that zone. You should interact with all points of interest on a map because at the very least they give you experience. 
Unfortunately, some of these require you to build a little gay ass shootout cabin for 2000 currency, so I always skip building these because there are much better ways to spend your money as a new player. Each zone also has outposts, which are important for three reasons. First of all, you respawn at outposts and you can fast travel to them at any time. The user interface is just really badly designed, so you might miss it. Secondly, outposts have cabinet shops where you buy all your weapons, restock on ammo and deliver DLC stuff. Thirdly, you can sleep at outposts for 250 currency, setting the time to whenever you want, usually the morning, but people often reset to a specific time when animal need zones have animals at them. Outpost shopping, guns, ammo, etc. We are going to talk a lot about buying stuff. You can interact with cabinets in outposts to access the shop where you can buy everything from weapons to skins for in-game currency. Some weapons, scopes and ammo are locked because you need to progress with this specific weapon type by hunting with them to unlock them. Now before I continue, note that the user interface for the shop is absolutely fucking disgusting. It's really difficult to find anything, you cannot click and drag the slider properly and even then scrolling goes literally the other way. It always resets to the top of the list and all the important information is hidden under layers of needless menus. Like why couldn't they just add the possible animal class on the weapon itself as well? Now I will teach you the best ways I found to navigate this cancer UI. For instance, if you want to buy more ammo for a weapon you already own and you are not an autistic American gun nut who has memorized every weapon and corresponding ammo type in the world, I recommend finding the weapon first and then buying the ammo for it. For instance, let's find our Giga Chad Ranger 243 under rifles and once we click on compatible items, you can see there's the basic free cartridge that I told you about exactly 53 tips ago, but there's also another type costing exactly 530 currency too. Remember ethical hunting and using the right type of ammo to down animals? The Ranger 243 only has two cartridge types and both only support ethically hunting between animal classes 2 and 6, but other weapons might have different ammunition types that allow for hunting between different ranges even with the same weapon. Now when it comes to ammo characteristics, for instance the difference between the two Ranger cartridges is that one of them has better expansion, the other better penetration. And just like your mom, I'm pretty sure we want better penetration. Why? Well, because the ammo with the larger penetration isn't free, first of all, and also because it makes sense that better penetration penetrates to vital organs better. It's not like the free ammo made the animals bleed better than very low anyways with the better expansion. As for weapon characteristics, I always wanted better accuracy than the Ranger, but this Giga Chad rifle is already at 78. Now before buying a new weapon, make sure you check what ammo your weapon actually supports, because it might be a 100 accuracy weapon, but it might only support class 1 ammo, which is only good for shooting birds and bunnies. Now. I don't know much about what guns to recommend you in this game, but I also know that professional Call of the Wild YouTubers will want to optimize the fun out of your game. So one thing I will recommend you is to experiment with the guns yourself and not listen to anyone. I have one small exercise for you though. See if you can buy a class 7 to 9 ammo and a weapon that supports it for hunting big game like moose or buffalo, because right now with your starter gear, you are lacking the necessary firepower or string power to bring down such beasts. You probably want a scope for most of your weapons and I will spoil how to use the crossbow scope, simply because it frustrated me when I didn't know how to use it in the heat of the moment and I missed my target. When you are zoomed in with the crossbow scope, 
the top line is for shooting accurately at 30 meters, the middle line is accurate at 60 meters, and the bottom line is don't use a crossbow. <laughs> there is also an archery range in Parque Fernando next to the first outpost if you want to practice. How do you even equip or swap weapon scopes or ammo? Because let me just quickly say it really is a Herculean task through the stupid UI. First, buy the scope or ammo through an outpost cabinet. Whilst still inside the cabinet, go into storage and drag the scope or ammo to the right side which is your character's inventory. By the way, you can only carry up to a certain weight limit. Then exit out of the cabinet press escape and press inventory. Drag the scope or ammo onto the weapon on the wheel and you are done. You get skill and perk points for leveling up. You don't get separate weapon type perk points so you can spend these across any weapons. Now of course you are probably gonna spend these on only rifles most likely. Resetting these points is another stupidly expensive money sink and you level up really slowly, so spend skill and perk points wisely. That's all I wanted to say on weapons and perks. Now go and pick whatever makes sense to you. Lures and DLC Let's talk about shopping for supporting gear. As a new player, animal lures don't seem to do all that much. I'm sure if you have 3000 hours in the game you notice a big difference, but to me they just seem as useless as the lures in Hunting Unlimited 15 years ago. After playing a bit more, I will say however that using the predator caller seems to be the only reliable way to hunt small carnivores like foxes and jackals in forested areas. After getting a warning call, keep using the caller and wait in a clearing for the animal to approach you before shooting them. When it comes to DLC gadgets, they are often really overpowered or just feel like they should be part of the base game. The backpacks are an exception. Don't ever wear backpacks because they increase your visibility and noise by a lot. It seems like backpacks were basically implemented for no good reason at all, when the risks far outweigh any benefit they would provide. I cannot imagine traveling miles on foot between objectives without the quad bike. You can spawn one at outposts without costing anything and teleport them to yourself if you left it in a ditch somewhere. They do make a lot of noise, but that doesn't matter. You can literally just drive ahead of animals and start blasting. So quad bikes can make the game feel really shallow. Quad bikes should be a part of the main game from every for everybody and not separate DLC. You can also deliver a DLC bloodhound which will help you track shot animals. But to be honest, even though I played a lot with bloodhounds and my bloodhound is up to like level 20, it always felt like there was something missing or bloodhounds were just badly implemented because you can literally track animals much faster yourself than the bloodhound can and you don't even need animals to bleed. I know that the immersion Karens will get mad, but just because you can pet the dog and it's love funny memes, it doesn't make the bloodhounds all that useful. Bark in your dog's face and see how he reacts. The game says bloodhounds cannot scare animals, but uh, Call of the Wild YouTubers say that sometimes they can, so I sent the hound to the dog pound. The most effective way of hunting is probably just resetting time and farming animal need zones. This is probably what all of your favorite Call of the Wild YouTubers do in their shorts, shooting diamond trophies all the time. You can reset time in outposts for 250 currency, but there is another overpowered DLC gadget that can do the same and better. Tents are like really overpowered mobile outposts where you can reset the time, access storage, respawn and you can even fast travel to them like real outposts. Note that you need to place a tent 
I think at least 300 meters from a need zone otherwise animals might not spawn in. One thing that destroys the illusion of this game faster than any DLC is when animals bug out. They will get stuck at the edge of the water all the time and even on trees when they are fleeing. A really sad fact is that the only way I ever managed to hunt really difficult carnivores like cougars and lions was when they glitched out and literally did not move even when I shot them multiple times. Sometimes you will not get sound indicators when animals start fleeing or they will literally flee in your exact direction which is like shooting fish in a barrel. I wish serious bugs like this were fixed in the game like 6 years ago but the developers still haven't addressed them. In our final nice tip, I was going to recommend you which DLC to buy first, but it got me thinking. This game is like buying a printer. Very often, a really expensive printer actually costs very little, because at the end of the day, you will be paying ridiculous prices for ink cartridges until the rest of your life. With all the holiday sales going on and the base game costing only 4 bucks, all the DLC costs 110 bucks, and to be honest, there's at least 40 bucks worth of DLC you apparently can't live without. So all I wanted to say is, maybe buy the pirate map. Thank you very much for sticking with me until the end of the video. This is the longest project I've ever done. I don't know if I'm gonna play this game in the future. Um, I think I'm gonna upload a couple of the clips I've recorded here and there and uh, do a couple of shorts. But uh, otherwise I play like animal type games like park builders and whatnot. You can subscribe if you want. It's uh, totally up to you. So again, thanks for watching and uh, I shall see you in the next one. This has been Two Siders. Bye bye.